name is Mike, and I really want to thank you uh, for coming along as we try a brand new idea here on Our Money Life, and it is called Let's Do Chores. Uh, basically, what I'm looking at doing is some live streams like we've never done before, and what those are going to be is live streams where you actually head out to do chores with me. There is one one little uh, one little trick to that, and that is that you have to go and subscribe to the Beyond the Ranch channel because that's where these Let's Go Do Chores are going to live. They're going to live on the Beyond the Ranch channel. That's where we are do our other live streams as well. We do a live stream every first and third uh, Sunday of the month, and that's Aaron and I, and uh, we can hang out there and, and do that. But also it's going to be where these uh, Let's Do Chores live along with some other stuff that we're going to do with the kids and have a little bit of fun on that channel as well. So head on over to Beyond the Ranch. Uh, subscribe to that. Head down to the description there, and you can actually see the the link for the Beyond the Ranch channel. And just subscribe, and then you'll get notifications when we do go live. That is our live stream channel. It's actually be kind of our uh, behind the scenes channel as well. So thank you for coming along with me uh, this morning. Our very first Let's Do Chores will be feeding the cows in probably uh, some of the uh, most horrible conditions that we can actually see just aside uh, from a uh, blizzard here on the ranch. And Aaron and I were just talking. We were inside. Uh, I had to take Bean back inside. I've been out here for about an hour running around and, and getting some chores done, getting chickens fed, horses taken care of, that kind of stuff. And I had to take Bean back inside. And Aaron said, well, how is it outside? And honestly, it's cold. I'll give it that. It's really cold. Uh, last I checked, the temperature's minus 15 degrees outside. The nice thing is that there's no wind. So there's no wind blowing. So that keeps our wind chill uh, at minus whatever it is, 15 degrees. Uh, so that's that's nice. The, the thing is, is the temperature warms up a little bit and we creep towards that zero mark. That's when the wind starts to kick in. And really, it only takes a five mile an hour wind to put us down to that minus 20 degrees in the wind chill. And that's when things really start to get horrible. So uh, what we're going to do today is, uh, first of all, I'm going to have a little drink of coffee. This mug actually sent to me by Rick and Don Gephardt up in uh, Kalispell, Montana. It's a, I don't know if you can see that, the R Wyoming Life um, mug. And these things are, are handy for for keeping stuff warm. So what we're going to do, what our plan is, is we're going to we're going to jump in the tractor, we're going to head out, and we're going to get cows fed. It sounds pretty simple. Hopefully everything works uh, pretty well. I'm going to bring you along with me, and uh, we should have a lot of fun. All you have to do is uh, comment if you would like. I think Matt, uh, one of our moderators, is here with us, and uh, he'll be able to uh, keep an eye on things and and uh, shoot any messages my way that I definitely need to see because I do see the chats pop up on my phone here that we're doing the live stream on, but they do go by pretty darn fast. So uh, if you if I do miss you, feel free to uh, jump back in there. Hey, from Casper, Brad from Casper. Hey, man, how's it going? Um, does the Wi-Fi work out in the fields? That's a darn good question. Actually, you know what I forgot to do? Hold on one second because I did forget to do something. I do have my Wi-Fi off. So basically, uh, what I have, sorry about that, guys. Uh, what I have is the Wi-Fi turned off so that um, we can actually just run off of cellular. And we're not going too far out in the field, so I think things will work uh, pretty well. It's bright out there, so we need sunglasses. If you need to, turn down the brightness on your uh, on your monitor a little bit. <laughs> You're more than welcome to do that. Some gloves. Now, I don't wear really, really thick gloves when I go outside. I like these uh, thin little gloves. Uh, they they allow me to actually feel what I'm doing with my fingers as a the big mittens or, or anything like that. The problem is they're not very warm, but uh, the whole goal in feeding this morning is to limit our exposure to the outside. Uh, temperatures like this, I think we're looking at frostbite within about 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, we want to make sure that we don't hang out outside as much as we can. Speaking of hanging out outside, uh, this is the Hustler bale processor, this big giant thing right here that's actually in the shop. And normally it doesn't live in the shop, but one of the things that we figured out over the last couple of days, and as days got colder, see it's still hooked up to the tractor there. Normally I leave this thing outside and I go hook up to it in the morning and then I head out to, uh, to feed with it. The thing is that uh, <laughs> with this thing being left outside, the hydraulics stop working on it. It's too dang cold. Uh, it sits outside, the hydraulic fluid that's in it gets too cold and then I, we just can't push it through and nothing works. So I ended up having to bring it into the shop here for the next few days. And, uh, and we'll be able to, uh, uh, to, to run it today, which will be nice. Uh, if you haven't seen this thing work before, the bale actually sits up here in, in this table, and it just spools the bale out for us, which is really handy. All right, we're getting ready to head outside. I'm going to open up the shop door here and give you guys a quick look at what's going on out here. 
before we jump in the track here, we're going to take a quick venture outside. And again, I'm trying to keep an eye on these chats, but sometimes they're hard to see on the phone. All right, here we are. Outside. Minus whatever it is, 15 degrees. By the way, if you ever uh, go to our website, right up there on our house, see if I can get my finger right, right about, right above that window, right there, uh, there is actually a camera that phases out this way. You can watch that camera and, uh, and see what we're doing, watch the cows. And in fact, there is actually a weather, a weather deal on there also. All right, cows are over here. Uh, that big gray or uh, a tan looking shed that's right above Right over there somewhere. <laughs> uh, that's where they live during the during the cold weather. They do tend to go in there, but it looks like they're all coming out and uh, and they're all waiting for food. So we better get to it. First things first, I'm gonna open up this gate so that we don't, since we're out here, so that we don't have to uh, open it up. I'm gonna clamp you guys right up here for a second. So that we don't have to jump out of the tractor and open it up again. All right. I'm gonna head back to the shop. Grab our feeding machine. No flags. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no flags up on the flagpole right now. Over the last week, we had some crazy winds, and they actually destroyed my flags, so I ended up having to order some more. But we'll get those back up. Okay, so one thing you'll notice about the cold weather, and you'll see it with me, is that uh, breathing in the cold weather is really hard, um, especially this cold. I don't know how people in Alaska do it, but uh, it's pretty dang tricky. It's hard to breathe. I'll find somewhere to clamp you guys down here. You're not going to wobble loose. All right. Huh. Before I head out, let's uh, answer a couple quick comments here really quick before I start up the tractor. Now, one thing I am doing today is I've actually got these little guys in, and these should help us uh, actually, uh, you know, be able to hear me and stuff while I'm in the tractor here. So, all right. Do, 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 do. Spuzzy up in Canada probably is like, hey, that's nothing, man. What are you doing? Why are you complaining about minus 15? So here, uh, uh, there was a question there about when you feed and, and when, because uh, obviously food keeps animals warm as they digest. And uh, there are a lot of people that will feed later on at night. Uh, we will too uh, when it's really cold. Uh, we tend to split up our days and our nights. Honestly, it doesn't get any colder here at night than it does during the day. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, what we'll do usually is at night, sometimes you'll see me sneak out and uh, throw out an extra bale and uh, make sure that those cows are happy too in the nighttime. So I don't know if this, that's pretty wobbly. It's one bad thing about the tractor. There's nowhere to clamp a camera in here. Ooh, that might work. All right. Tractor. Here we go. How many cows do you have? Tyler just asked. Uh, so there are a little bit over a hundred cows out here right now that we're gonna be feeding today. Now I can't see the comments. All right. I'm sure once I get out of here, um, I'm not gonna be able to see anything on the screen because it's so bright, but we'll try. So we talk about the Let's Do Chores uh, series of videos, and, and I got a couple questions already about, you know, what kind of videos are they going to be? Well, it just kind of depends on, uh, I kind of forgot how tall that thing was back there. <laughs> Make sure fit out the garage door. Um, it kind of depends on what we have going on, but uh, the Let's Do Chores videos, you know, obviously today we're feeding. Um, it could be as simple as, hey, let's go get eggs. Uh, maybe it would be, uh, we're going to go fix fence. I don't know. We'll just kind of play around with it as we go. And, and uh, I should close the garage door because I think I have the heat on in there, and that would be just giant and wasteful. Um, so we'll kind of see how it works as we go along. I'm going to flip the camera. Maybe I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to flip the camera around. I don't know if you're going to lose me audio-wise, but hopefully it still stays with us. As we head out uh, into the field, 
what we're doing is heading out here into our very pasture. We call this the triangle pasture. It's, uh, it's about 15 acres or so, but it's a really close to home pasture. If we do have to close cows up in, we can do that. We use it a lot during calving and really cold weather when we have to, uh, to close the cows in. One thing with this hustler is I have to, uh, I think at some point, I'm going to end up having to make a little bit bigger gate here just because this thing is tight coming through this gate. And I just see bad things happening someday. All right, the gate there can stay open. That's no problem. The cows are going to be very interested in what we're doing, and they're going to follow us. I kind of feel bad uh, <laughs> when I feed the cows on cold days like this because I like to feed them. Uh, a little bit closer to home. The water is right over there. In fact, uh, when we come back, we'll check that water because I still have one of those freeze miser things on there, and I want to make sure that that worked. Uh, we got down to. I want to make sure. As far as. And then they're going to feel stupid because they're going to have to follow us all the way back. But. Boom. Bad. We might get a glimpse of some deer up here. Drop my glove. We might get a glimpse of some deer up here. They've been hanging out in the hay yard. How much do you guys, how much snow do you guys get out there? That's a good question from, I lost it. <laughs> from somebody. Uh, the average snowfall here is about 60 inches a year um, over the winter, which equates to about six inches or eight inches of actual uh, moisture that we get. So as we get out here, we may experience a little bit of buffering. Who knows? We'll see. And honestly, the buffering is one of the reasons that we don't do a whole lot of live streams anymore, um, especially, you know, from the field, is that everybody, you know, tends to complain about them, and I get tons of emails and stuff like that, so it's sometimes easier just not to do them. But I did run into a situation because I was going to film for a video today, and with it being so cold out, the the batteries and cameras don't, don't last very long. Uh, the drone doesn't even fly when, it, when it's this cold. It refuses to do anything, and I'm guessing that's a safety feature so that it doesn't, you know, take off and fly to Canada or something like that. So uh, so I was kind of stuck for, uh, you know, thinking of how I was going to do a video today, but I do want to do this uh, uh, Let's Go Do Chores series, so I figured introducing it on the RYM Live channel would actually work really well, and then hopefully some of you guys will go to the Beyond the Ranch channel and sign up for that channel, subscribe to that channel so that you can uh, catch these when we do it about every other week. We'll go out and do different chores around the ranch to kind of show you how things are done. All right, right now we're heading over to the uh, to the hay yard. This is where we stack all of our hay, a majority of it. We do try to split up some of the hay, uh, and mostly that's just for insurance purposes. If something happened, and, uh, and well, insurance and safety purposes, if something happened, let's say we had a lightning strike uh, for some reason in the hay yard, and it burned up all of our hay, we would be up the creek because we'd have nothing to feed the cows. So we keep hay in two or three different spots, and we do that in order to uh, to make sure that that we've got it taken care of, that you know, if something does happen to the hay in this yard, we still have hay to feed the cows. There we go. So we're heading into the hay yard. Hay stacks in here. This is our, our winter hay that will last us hopefully in the spring we may not make it that far we may end up having to buy some all right and this is where we get to use this hustler uh, bale processor bale and roller we're going to grab some of these bales that i have set down here in rows like this sitting on the ground makes it a lot easier to grab with the hustler 
I do have a video coming with the Hustler and uh, that we can actually show some hints and tricks and how it works a little bit better for people that own them or people that are thinking about getting them, which might be kind of cool. All right, I'm going to open up this back window so we can see what we're doing. A little bit clearer. And flip the camera around. Sorry about that. Put my nose. All right, so first thing we have to do is lower our table and then those spikes on the back drop back down. I'm controlling those with these levers up here. And I went too far. And we're going to kind of dial this thing up. There's a dial right there on the front of the hustler that shows us where uh, we're sitting for what size bale. And then we just back up to the bale. Spikes go in the bale, and then we lift it up. That bale will actually leave off the table just a little bit. And then we're going to head out and take care of the next part of this. So there's the bale sitting like that. Next thing we have to do is cut off our net wrap. This is called a hay knife, by the way. Uh, it's got a razor blade up at the top. It works really good with the hustler because you can reach back. It's got a, what, a three foot handle on it so you don't have to climb up in the machine to cut this. This is one of the things we're gonna talk about in that upcoming video. I'm going to flip around to the back side here since I cut it halfway through. Cut the rest of the bale. And then the other cool thing about the hay knife is that it's got a little hook on it. So you can just grab your net wrap, eat a bunch of hay while you're at it. Okay, I'm going to go around this side. I'm running out of places to clamp you guys. Let's see here. That's not going to work. All right pull off our net wrap, wind it up, and throw it right here in the net wrap bin. We'll throw our hay knife in there as well. All right, back in the tractor. Now we're going to lower this bale down onto the table. I know it's kind of hard to see, guys. And then I should have brought a tripod or something, but we're going to drop the forks out the back. Now, just imagine that, but the forks are coming out of the back. And then we're going to lift it back up. Then we're going to back up some more and we're going to grab a second bale. And then that bale, we're going to lift up as well. And then we'll jump out here and I'll show you what we're sitting with. So we've got our one bale loaded here. It's ready to go in the table. Our next bale here is ready 
to be fed to the cows. So we're going to take these two bales out to the cows and get this done. Our deer friends were not here in the hay yard this morning. It's kind of surprising. All right, back in. And I can get a couple comments while I'm in here. And I can see. All right. Massachusetts, learning where your food comes from. Yeah, this is where it starts with uh, thousands of small farms just like ours. All right, we're heading out. You can see the bales back there. One thing I always have to remind myself, and I'll show you really quick, is that table arm obviously is sticking way out there. So what I want to do is actually lift this up a little bit. And that's so when I go through gates, I don't end up tearing it up. Are you losing a lot of hay to the deer? Thanks, Matt, for that. Um, you know, it, it's kind of one of those given things. So we figured out uh, how much how much a deer will eat over the over the uh, over the winter. Um, a deer maybe weighs 100, 150 pounds, and we figure we're losing over an entire winter season. A about 400 pounds uh, of feed to a deer. And, you know, there's things you can do. You can fence, you can do all kinds of different stuff, but, uh, you know, you got to look at that cost comparison. You know, is it worth it? Um, or are you just, you know, you're just stuck. I mean, luckily we don't have elk coming through, you know, that are eating just as much as a cow. Uh, and, and I don't think the deer are eating exclusively off of us. So we're kind of in a, in a good spot there. So yeah, it's just kind of one of those necessary evils. All right, guys, we're heading out here. This is heading back through this gate. And I'm going to need those gloves that you could like use a touch screen with. Okay. Oh, it's not working now. There we go. Whoops. Cows, like I said, came out <laughs> to see us, followed us up for food. Um, not the smartest thing in the world to do because we're going to take them right back into the triangle pasture and we're going to get them as close as we can to shelter. It's going to be cold today. If the wind does kick up, I want to make sure that uh, they're not out in that in that cold weather. For those of you who are worried about the cows in this very cold, frigid temperature, um, look forward. There we go. Okay, look forward to uh, Friday's video, which I'm actually already starting to work on. Uh, which is about how animals handle the cold and uh, talking to some vets and, and things like that, and animal biologists that, that know um, how the cold affects cows and, and chickens and, and all kinds of good stuff. So I think uh, I think it's going to be a good video. It'll be coming out on Friday for you guys. So I kind of alluded to it a little bit in, the, uh, in one of our Facebook posts here recently talking about uh, the snow on a cow's back. So... There's a comment there. There's some comments and stay up about eight seconds longer. Um, from Mark, I am explaining how hard farmers work, myriad number of jobs they have to do, and the cold does not make it any easier. Students are naming what jobs. I just lost them again. One of your students should work with YouTube and make these things stay up longer. Students are naming what, what jobs farmers do. Yeah, you can. I mean, here's the thing. Like when I came here, Obviously, we were not we were not farmers or ranchers when we came here. Uh, I worked a nine to five corporate job basically at that time. And uh, you know, if I needed a plumber, I called a plumber. If I needed an electrician, I called an electrician. If I had a, uh, my lawnmower stopped working or the engine died, I uh, <laughs> probably just throw it away and get a new one. And uh, yeah, that's not how things work around here. And I learned that really quick with uh, my father-in-law Gilbert was you know. Uh, you don't know how to how to you know do plumbing. You you better figure it out pretty darn quick. So uh, that's how it worked really really fast for me. And and you know it's not a bad thing. It it does keep you busy and uh, it also saves you money in the long run. And knowing how to fix your own problems. I mean it's just like you know uh, they always say you should know how to fix your own tires or, or fix a flat or change a tire. And uh, that's definitely true. Let's sit here and answer a couple comments while he's sneak back up on us. 
Can everybody hear okay? I'm still, uh, we're obviously using this, this ear, AirPod technology stuff and, and hoping it's working okay. All right. Yeah, the stocking cap, the, yeah, out here too. I don't, uh, I don't mess around with ball caps or, or cowboy hat when, uh, <laughs> when it's this cold. I like my ears. All right, so cows are coming up on us. Obviously, they're annoyed now because we made them walk. If you are watching, obviously, you're watching the live stream, but if you're watching uh, on the webcam as well, you can see us over on the right-hand side sitting here waiting for the cows. So let's take a quick peek outside. Here come our cow friends. And while it is, you know, it's minus whatever it is, 10, 15 degrees, there is no wind blowing, which is really nice. I didn't forget my sunglasses in the tractor. Very bright. Uh, but uh, there is no wind blowing. That makes that makes the whole thing a lot more tolerable. So here's what we got. We've got the bale sitting up in here. These are the rotors. These rotors are going to turn. And I'm going to try to get you as, as good a video as I can. I wish I had about three arms and, and an extra person. But um, I'll show you how this whole thing is going to feed for us. Now, here come the cows coming in. Are they on my head? They're on my head. Ah, awesome. Thanks, Ruth. Okay. <laughs> you can't tell me you guys haven't done that. Come on. All right. <laughs> Jump back into the tractor. Get these guys fed. Oh, okay. Yes, the tractor does have heat, uh, but it doesn't work great in these temperatures just because um, it is so cold out that the tractor has to heat up that outside air. It's pretty hard for the tractor to do at times. Okay, so here we go. These are our levers down here. Uh, we are gonna, I'm gonna open this up again so we can see. We got a cow standing right there, sticking her nose in it. Okay, we're gonna hit our levers. That'll turn on our rotor. Hold on a second, let me flip this around. Turns on our rotor, hay starts falling out. Now we can start moving very slowly. Cow in our way. Ooh, cow. Thank you. All right. And here we go. You guys have all seen this work before, probably. The cows are all so polite, just hanging out, waiting their turn, walking along with us like an Eskimo. I always think it's funny that cows will just walk along, waiting for that perfect piece of food to come off the bale because, you know, the inside is the best part. It's like an Oreo. So, you know, the outside is cool and all, and I'll come back and eat that. But that middle part right there, oh, that's the good stuff. And I'm going to follow you along the whole way just to get that middle of the bale. Be surprised how far you can stretch a bale out with this, uh, with this unroller. We're almost, almost back to the house. Hey, Bambi. Hey, Bambi. Okay, we're coming down to the bottom of this bale. Now the uh, the unroller tends to, when it gets down here to the very, very core, it tends to just kind of grab it and kick it out. And, 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 and. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. We're going to turn off our rotors. Stop the L tractor. 
drop our bale bed back down. And we're going to rotate this bale up into place. Each one of these bales about 1,400 pounds for these cows. So two of them should do them pretty good for the day. And then we'll creep back out tonight and get them another bale probably this evening. All right, heading down. Guys. You can see how far we spread out that, excuse me. You can see how far we spread out this bale. It goes back there a ways. Lots of cows. Bambi, however, is waiting for something better. Hey, Bam. What do you know? You got frozen snot sickles. Yeah. Frozen snot sickles. You okay? okay? I'm guessing she wants to bail all to herself. All right, we're going to cut this bail off. We'll cut the net wrap off of this bail, I guess I should say. Hold the bag on. Cut this thing all open too. Excuse me. What are you doing? Is that good? Look at this. So inside these rotors, the hay basically turns into like crumbs. And apparently it is really good. Is that good stuff? Two cows have figured it out. So this thing actually sent to me by the Bostic family in Indiana. Uh, they they used these. They loved them. They sent it to me and said, here, try this out. And honestly, I really didn't have a use for it until I got the uh, the Hustler feeder. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I love this thing. Just a little bit of net wrap there. This bail. Hey, Bambi, you want to hold the camera? No? Chilly. All right, I'm going to drop this bale into the bed or into the, uh, into the feeder. Kind of nuzzles itself right in there, which is kind of nice. The 
The spikes on the backside, by the way. I'll jump out and show you here really quick. I'm gonna tilt this up. But the spikes on the backside that pick up the bale. I had somebody really, really worried about you know what happens to them when we're not hauling a bale. And you know, can a cow get hurt? But they actually flip right into that kind of a traveling position. So we don't have to worry about any cows getting speared or gored or whatever you want to call it. Nope. What do you guys want me to do with this bale if you're watching on the uh, the webcam? Should I make a little, maybe I'll make a circle or something with this bale. Let's do that. All right. Watch out, kiddos. big circle right down here. You can make a heart for Valentine's Day. Make a sharp right. Luckily there's no water in that pond, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, I just saw a question about beef jerky sticks. That is the beef jerky not beef jerky sticks going to be finished. We took over a bunch. I'm not exactly sure. We, we, we're getting a bunch of new beef jerky made. Uh, right now, we do have beef jerky sticks available, but uh, regular beef jerky will be coming back soon. And uh, we'll have that on the website. I'll let you guys know when it's done. I'm, I'm not really sure how long it takes them to, uh, to make it. Okay. I think the people driving by on the highway, my neighbors probably think I'm crazy. I know they think I'm crazy, probably. They know probably about it. I had to laugh when we started doing beef jerky. Uh, we got a lot of emails and stuff, and people were like, this isn't beef jerky. And, and honestly, our beef jerky is, is like a traditional beef jerky. Um, it's not that super, super dry, like, you know, shoe leather beef jerky, but it is probably drier than what, you, depending on the flavor, I guess I should say, but it's probably drier than what you would see at, like, a gas station or something like that, so. Maybe a little bit bigger circle than I was thinking. That's okay. Let's look around and see what the cows are up to over here. They're following us around. It's always, there's always something better. The next piece of hay is always the best one that you're ever going to have. Even this girl's like, hey, hey, there's some for me. Get it? Hey. Goes blind cow. He's on the move. He goes fast for an old cow. Bambi's over there. She's just kind of heading over this way, too. All right. Keep on making the circle. And we can end up right over there where we'll take a look at the freeze miser and see how it's working in this cold temperature. Getting down there to the end of the bale here. So the one thing that, you know, good or bad about the Hustler is that it does take longer to feed a bale, you know, unless you just want to, you know, put a really thick windrill out, but there was that cork. Um, it does take a little bit longer to feed a bale just, just because, um, you know, you're spreading it a little bit thinner than you normally would. All right. We're gonna head over here to the water tank, take a look and see how this freeze miser thing is doing. 604 people here, guys. Thanks for all the help this morning. I'm starting calling you guys ranch hands. 
Gilbert used to always say, I'm going to make a rancher out of you yet. Maybe that's what I should say. All right. <laughs> Over here to the uh, to the stock tank. This is um, the cow's main stock tank that they've got right now. I think I'm safe enough to turn off the tractor. It'll probably start right back up, right? All right. Hey kids, we've got some replacement heifers in here. Um, they have a water tank up there on the other side, but so here's what uh, here's what we're looking at over here. This is a, a well, I don't know what the temperature is. Somebody that's watching the webcam can tell me what the temperature is. I can look up my nose for a second while I try to switch this camera. So we do have a heater in this tank. This is a 1500 watt heater that uh, minus seven. Um, that obviously cannot keep up uh, with the cold temperatures overnight. So the stock tank is obviously open here, frozen over here. And it is not just frozen, it's frozen thick. That is a thick, thick sheet of ice on there. But the interesting part is that hydrant right there is on. There's a hose running from that hydrant all the way over here to a float. I never, ever thought I would look at a tank, minus 17 degrees, and there's a float on this tank. And the only reason that there is a float on this tank is right here because of this little thing. This is the freeze miser. You can see, still running. Water is running out of that, and that's what's keeping this whole tank open. But I should break some ice here for the cows, and I just so happen to have... Uh, Drop this off this morning. This is my favorite ice breaking tool. It's some kind of weird. It's like a trenching, trenching spade or some darn thing. But uh, it is about my favorite tool for breaking ice. You can chop right through ice. I've used axes and I've used all kinds of stuff before, and you know everything works, I guess, but. Not everything works as well as some other things. So we're going to try to open this up a little bit for the cows. And I saved this part for last because you do get wet and you have ice shooting in your face and it's cold. I didn't bring a pitchfork or anything to get this ice out, but I'll deal with that later. Whew. That is as good as I'm going to get right now. Whew. Okay. The gloves are all wet. All right, we're gonna head back to the shop.
drop the loader into it. Yeah, and then you also break a tank and God knows what else. There's been, uh, if you noticed on that, there's actually crossbars on that tank as well. So you can't, uh, you can't put the loader into it. Good thought though. I've taken a lot of weird kind of shortcuts on some things and uh, they may work 90% of the time. But I tell you what, if I put the loader into that tank and that tank broke, I would be scrambling out here in freezing temperatures, trying to set another tank, figure out how to put or how to get water for these cows. It wouldn't be a fun day. All right, we're heading back towards the shop. We're gonna back this thing back in which is a trick sometimes. Enjoy your breakfast, cows. Go get something to drink. I didn't break that all up for nothing. All right, back through this little tiny gate. So when we get back inside, I'm going to ask you a couple questions about uh, this experience. If it's something that you liked, something you didn't like, um, anything you would like to change about it. Um, if you say that you'd like to get rid of any buffering that happened, so would I, but I don't own Verizon, so I can't uh, build a new tower. Wish I could. All right, we're just back into the shop here. The reason I keep on opening up this window is I need to clean it. I got uh, hydraulic fluid sprayed up on it. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with that arm. I don't know if you can see it. But I have to make sure I keep an eye on that. And that extension that's on there is actually there uh, when we feed square bales, big square bales, so that they feed in correctly, which is something we're going to do in this upcoming video about the bus here, too. Alright. Back in, back in. Garage work. And we're done. Woof da. All right. Lights back on here. Got the lights on a motion sensor. So it works pretty cool. All right. We're right back where we started, guys. 49 minutes later, <laughs> we fed, uh, what, two bales to 100 some odd cows. So thank you very much for coming along with us. Obviously, uh, this Let's Go Do Chores experiment, uh, like I said, is gonna take place on the Beyond the Ranch channel. So if you, I gotta turn off. The heater's running. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but I sure can. All right, so um, the, uh, the Let's Do Chores experiment taking place on the Beyond the Ranch channel. Make sure you go and subscribe to that channel. And then uh, you will get alerts when we go out and do this kind of thing. We're going to vary the times that we do them as well uh, so that we can, uh, you know, catch different time frames. You know, we're going to do stuff in the morning. We're going to do stuff at night. Uh, we're going to do stuff in the mid-afternoon. And it's going to be things like going out and check, uh, checking cows, going out, getting eggs, um, checking on the steers, che you know, feeding cows, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, make sure that you do turn on the bell notification on this channel. If you're not subscribed to RYM Life, please do so. Um, and uh, if you turn on the bell notification so that you find out uh, when we're going to do those kind of things, because they might be kind of just very, very much uh, spur of the moment. So I think they're going to be lots of fun uh, and uh, and a way to bring people, you know, kind of more into the into the day to day type of stuff. 
that we're doing. We're still collecting license plates, by the way. So if you have a plate that you would like to see on the license plate wall, I'm still trying to figure out how to um, uh, take a picture of this license plate wall and, and get it online so people can find their plates. Because I had uh, a, a, a guy stop by here not too long ago and he said, hey, uh, did you get my plate up? And I was like, uh, probably. I, <laughs> I don't know. It's probably up there somewhere. So yeah, check out the Beyond the Ranch channel. Make sure that you, uh, that you uh, subscribe to that channel for videos just like these. We don't do a whole lot of live streams here on Our Wine Life, but when we do, uh, we do them for a purpose. So I'm going to go inside, warm up a little bit. My toes are cold. Um, that's where I get cold first and then the nose starts to run. Um, I'm going to head inside, get something to eat, another cup of coffee. Oh, is my coffee still warm? Oh, it's cold. Oh, but the coffee's warm. Good deal. All right. Um, yeah. And then we're going to, we're going to keep on rolling, come back on Friday for a brand new video. Uh, that's all about how the animals handle the cold. You got to see how I handle it, how we handle it, how we feed in it. Uh, but this week on Friday, you're going to uh, be able to check out exactly how the cows handle it. So that's it for me today. Um, I'm, I'd be happy to answer some questions here for a few minutes if you guys would like to post some questions uh, for your newsletter. If you don't sign up, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website. Um, head down to the bottom. There's a button that says sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we put them out. We try to do them every week. Uh, sometimes it doesn't happen. But uh, yeah. Yeah. We had an interesting newsletter. I thought so, anyway. Aaron got a lot of planting done, that's for sure. So, All right. Oh, thank you, JB, for the $20 Super Chat coffee fund. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I don't think I'm going to be doing a whole lot outside today, if I can help it. We'll see. When things like this, days like this, things break, too. So you never know. I actually uh, I called up to get some more pig food uh, this week from over in Belfouche, and I was told that I can't... Um, get pig food because all of their water pipes are frozen in the elevator and they need the water to keep the dust down. So uh, hopefully they get that fixed and we're able to get pig food. Why do they like the middle of the bale? I actually, I don't know if they do. I joke about that because uh, they follow us around. You know, they're always looking for that next best bite, but I don't know. I mean, if you look out there now, um, which I guess we look at them through a dirty, dirty, dirty window. Um, they're, you know, they don't hang around the core. So who knows? I think once I leave, then they, then they, you know, they just kind of spread themselves out. So if they like, good for them. All right. Get yourself an industrial sized coffee maker for your table inside the garage. I thought about that, but, uh, I do drink more coffee when it's cold, I guess, I guess. So I uh, really want to thank our moderators, of course, Aaron here helping us out. Matt Benzel, who is actually the uh, inspiration for uh, doing this type of video, because when Matt was here visiting us, uh, we got him up every morning. We made him go do chores with us. And uh, he inspired me to, uh, to come up with this type of video where you go and do chores with us. And I hope you enjoyed it for the very first time. Can you say hello to Brindley and Tucker? They did their ranch chores. Dang, thing. And wanted to watch you before they did homeschooling. Well, hey, guys. Be good in school. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, do you feed in the afternoon also? Today, we probably will. We'll probably go give them a bail at least this afternoon. Um, answer a couple questions here. And then I'll, I'll duck out of your guys' way and let you guys uh, have the rest of your day. And you guys can stay warm. Minus 36 in Canada. Oh, my God. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. Did you feed the bulls yet? Uh, the bales, the bulls don't need fed every day. There's only three bulls over there, so we take a bale over to them. They get a bale about once every three or four days, and uh, and then um, we're able to uh, spread that out a little bit. Same thing with the horses, the steers. Uh, they don't get fed every day. I think the, the steers actually are scheduled. I should have went and fed the steers because I think they need to be fed today. But, uh Yeah. Not everything. The cows need fed every day, obviously, but uh, some of these animals, they don't need it every single day. So, Do you have any ranch hands? Yep, two of them. Right now, it's just me and Aaron and the kids. They're not a whole lot of help. How's your hay supply holding out? Pretty good. We just we just got another load of hay in. Uh, one of our, uh, we ended up, there was a load of hay. They got stranded in town and they were looking for somebody to buy it. So we said, hey, yeah, sure, bring it out. So we ended up picking up an extra load of hay. That'll help out. 
when will the farm store be open? I don't know. You have to ask Aaron that question. We're working on that, though. We're going to figure out an open date here. Probably today is kind of the hope. So if you follow the farm store on Facebook, our Wyoming Life Farm Store, we'll post on there when the farm store will open back up. What do you wear for boots in this weather? Uh, these are bogs. I'll show them, well, I can show them to you. They're a little trash. I need new bogs. They're bogs. But they got holes in them. I'm not good. Bogs. All right. Guys, I'm going to hang it up. I'm going to go get something to eat. Uh, we, the cows don't get any grain. Uh, the cowboy hat that I wear is a Stetson. Uh, it's a Stetson Skyline here in the wintertime is the model, make and model. So thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Video coming on Friday. Subscribe to be on the ranch for videos just like this. And uh, we'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. Thanks, guys. And thanks to our moderators. Thank you, Aaron.